Hi, Masa Jada here with Masa on Sundays. Welcome back. Uh, our audience keeps growing and growing, which is really fantastic. A lot of uh, a lot of individuals. When I'm seeing the chats, guys. By the way, this is a, this is an experiential uh, uh, talk, and that's why I like to do these live. So if you're listening to this again, uh, the live talks are are say more intense. Uh, then just listen to the replays, by the way. So uh, get yourself online and then we can chat uh, via chat. A um, lot of great things happening for you. Such crazy changes uh, happening for a lot of people. So again, just keep chatting, guys, and I'll answer some of the questions uh, on today's topic. Today's topic, by the way, is uh, <clears throat> why changing, start loving yourself. Why changing your body image uh, can change your life. Okay. And you know, when I was doing research on this topic, uh, 
you know, and you can do research on the topic now, you, can, you know, go ahead and do research on the topic and, you know, they'll talk about the self-image and everything uh, and what to do about it. But I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm just, I'm just saying if you're doing it for the wrong purpose or if, in my words, the wrong consciousness, um, then it, it's not going to work out as well for you, especially when it's coming to, uh, you know, bikini season, right? Beach season and so on like that. You want to have that perfect self image or a perfect body image. Okay. So there, there's one that self image and then a body image. And I'll explain why uh, you might look perfect on the outside, but then, you know, you don't have the right experiences uh, compared to say that body image. So that's all coming up for you. Uh, and then afterwards, I will, uh, through the abilities that I have, I will scan you all, uh, not all of you, but I'll scan those that go, hey, Ma, scan me, see what's going on with my life. Okay. Uh, just to just to let you know that the possibilities of having, uh, having say, deeper perception, and again, it's not psychic abilities, very, very different, having a deeper perception on how this reality works. So it allows you to say, understand it allows you to understand why life is the way it is and then you can do something about it and that and that's really the key uh is to say elevate yourself to a higher level of consciousness and most individuals what they do is they use psychology uh you know nlp some sort of self-improvement method uh, again uh in this case body shapes and so on like that which is huge or, or that body image, right, which is huge, especially summertime coming up, uh, they'll do dieting, they'll do, um, you know, they'll do all that stuff. But what's missing? What's missing in uh, what's the big key that's missing? What's the biggest component that's missing? And that's what we're going to be talking about um, uh, on today's show. So with some of you that don't know me, again, uh, we get a lot of people online you know new people online all the time so again thanks for that uh some of those people that don't know me it's like what am i about well uh, if you can imagine say if you can uh, how do i define myself uh well uh, and maybe some of you can define me who've gone through the process by the way uh basically I'm, i would consider myself a futurist you know because i can see future vision uh but unlike other futurists or the closest thing is or even an oracle you know a futurist oracle basically what they can do is like uh they see the future and how they see the future is that um, again through experiences in the past through historical data through analysis and so on like that uh, i actually have future vision so i can see the possibilities of where you are depending on which path you're currently on and then also i also see possibilities of what's around you if you change to the path that you're on right so it's like a futurist with the abilities to say transform or change the future for you and I've done it for hundreds of thousands of individuals uh, throughout the world. So it's very different. Okay. And, and this gets back to, uh, this gets back to, well, is it psychology? No, it's not psychology. Is it NLP? No, is it anything that you're doing physically here? Only thing that you're doing physically here is like where you're rendering yourself uh, in space time or the simulation of you. So it gets kind of wonky or it gets kind of like shit what's way out there. You know, I'm in a, um, you know, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a, one of those movies, you know, I'm in a, uh, a Marvel movie, you know, where they talk about the multiverse, you know, like Dr. Strange or um, what is it? Um, everything, everywhere, all at once and all that, right? They talk about the multiverse or Spider-Man movies. Um, well, you kind of are. Well, not kind of, you are in a multiverse. Uh, and what dictates on how you see yourself, okay, what dictates on how you see yourself is dictated by the simulation or which simulation that you're rendering or you are, say, using uh, at the time. Um, and then psychology uh, and everything else falls into place. Right. Again, and that's why the work that we do called exponential intelligence, basically it explains life, life explains, it allows you to understand why life is the way it is, and then how to transform it. Right. Very, very simple. Basically, what that means is like, hey, I'm running this simulation of myself, I need to run that simulation, which is a lot better which is uh, I'm more beautiful in that simulation. I'm more healthy in that simulation. I'm this and this and this, whatever you want to fill in there. There's a simulation that is 
that is available for you to do that. Okay. But what most people do, and this is why changing your body image, the standard way it works, but again, it's only surface level. And that's the importance of it. And I'll explain some of the details uh, as we come up. Um, but again, this is why no matter what you do, you always feel the same on the inside. That makes sense to you. How many of you before XI or if you're new feel that way, right? Uh, and, and I'll give you some extreme examples uh, on this, uh, on this, on say why body image or how normal say processes of transforming your body image doesn't really work out well for you or how to just improve it. Right. Very, very simple. And I'll give you some severe examples, some extreme examples, so we understand the concepts on uh, the normal or the standard process of changing your body image or forcing yourself to love yourself doesn't work as, as optimal. Yes, can you see results? Yes, but you're dragging this whole weight behind you. So again, let me just reiterate, this isn't psychology, this isn't NLP, this isn't something that's here. Okay. What happens is that your psychology, whatever that you do, mindset, positive thinking, spiritual awake, awakening starts here. Okay. The surface layer of say your reality, you're in the game already. Okay. What I'm talking about, what XI is about exponential intelligence or becoming exponentially intelligent starts over here where you render the simulation of yourself. Okay. Now, if you don't understand it, it's okay. Just allow it just to settle in. Basically, how you see the world right off the bat starts here. So there's a ton of layers in between till you get to the point of where psychology, say, really benefits you or self-improvement or, you know, mindsets or, you know, uh, state changes or whatever it might be. Again, there's a ton of, say, background info that needs to change. XI is here. How do you get to this level or the master blueprint of your life? Well, you become exponentially intelligent. Simple as that. Uh, and this is the show to do it. So I'll explain. I'll explain in detail. Uh, and very simply, uh, again, changing your self-image the standard way. I don't care what it is. Again, you can look it up on, you know, YouTube or Google or whatever, uh, you know, just edit, you know, improve my self-image. And you'll get a whole list, you know, from makeup ideas, you know, to, you know, dieting plans, to, you know, telling yourself uh, you're worth something, <clears throat> you know, uh, getting a makeover, um, you know, uh, getting a coach, whatever it is. Those things are okay, but it's like having a brand new car and you can't go anywhere with it because you don't have the key. So wh wh where are you? You're sitting in your brand new car. Again, a new self-image, new identity, new clothes, new body, you know, even surgical procedures, right? You, uh, people change their, their faces and so on like that. Their faces, their body structure, new everything, but you don't have the key to go anywhere. That's the way psychology, NLP, and so on like that feel like to me. Now, again, they've created that new car, right? That beautiful car, uh, you, your body, and so on. But the, the key is that the key is missing. That's the important part. You can't go anywhere. So why do I say that? Because your surroundings, your environment, the way you see yourself, you're still in that same, same scenario of yourself. It only starts when you move out of the scenario, right? Or your environment and not, it's an, it, it is your physical environment, but again, um, it's your, uh, it's how you render or how you see yourself, yourself um, off the bat or how you, again, uh, I can't say it enough, render yourself uh, and then your psychology and everything works. So let me give you an example. Okay, uh, and many of you, uh, eating disorders, okay? And again, extreme examples, just to get, get, create a point, uh, eating disorders, right? So a lot of your families have eating disorders, however it be, uh, eating disorders, you know, bulimia, uh, you know, anorexia, again, there's, you know, different variations of that, uh, you know, uh, gorging, so on and so on and so on. Uh, why does that happen, right? You look at uh, people who had anorexics and again, who, who who's out there, who's been out there, um, uh, it's kind of cute. Can I have the keys to add? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you guys are all XI compliant. You're ready to drive. 
uh, your life forward. Absolutely, you can. So, so those individuals, and again, comment in on those individuals who've had eating disorders, even if it, even if it wasn't you, it was in your family. So comment in, uh, in, or binge eating disorders, so on like that. Absolutely. So what that happens or what happens when that happens is that, you know, you look at somebody who's anorexic and it's like they're, you know, their bones, they can see the bones, right? You can see their bones, but then they look in the mirror and they see themselves and they go, shit, I'm fat. So it's like, whoa, wait a second. What reality are you in? That's the key, right? They're not crazy. They, they literally see, they really literally do not see themselves, you know, bones. They do not see theirs, that they're just like pure skeleton. Why is that? Because they are rendering themselves in another reality. Okay. This reality, when they look at themselves, even in the mirror, okay, shows them that they're like fat, overweight, disgusting, whatever it might be. They do not see what's right in front of them. Okay. And I'll give you more and more examples, but I know it sounds crazy. Somebody says body dysmorphia. I would consider it more of a rea reality distortion or dysmorphia okay because again in that reality that they live in again psychology is over here the reality that they're rendering themselves is here and i wish i could uh draw this out i don't know if you guys can see this um let's see if you can see this um, if i hold this up can you guys see this yeah you guys can see, um, see this so um yeah I'll, I'll just draw it out hopefully you can see it um Your, your self image of yourself, again, is, is, you know, you start from here. All right. So um, you guys can, can you guys see that? No, it's, can you guys see that? No, it's pretty dark. Anyway, um, sorry, guys. Uh, we'll do better next time anyway so your self body image starts here okay what you're seeing is that say production after your what you're seeing in that person again the bone you know skin to the bone you know bones you know and, and bone and skin right you're seeing the after effect okay what's on the what's on the screen you're seeing that version of, of that person again you're seeing it in the reality that they are creating themselves Okay, they, again, like 10 layers back, a bit more actually, but about 10 layers back, they're in another reality. That mirror that you're seeing, that reflection that you're seeing of them, they don't see that at all, okay? And then you go, well, how can they not see that at all? Well, it's just a perception that they have. Uh, perception in this case equates to say a reality, but it's not just a point of view, okay? It literally is, they are rendering themselves in another space time or another multiverse of themselves and they're existing here, okay? And that's the confusing part for them. And so some of the telltale sign is like, they're never here, they're never connected. The, um, you know, they don't relate to a lot of things. They might not see a lot of things that you do or other people do. Again, it's not because they're mentally crazy or anything like that. And that's why mental issues and so on, especially if you have, you know, uh, you know severe eating disorders, um, uh, doesn't work because it's not a psychological issue. It doesn't deal, it doesn't benefit with drugs and so on. It might make it better, but it doesn't say resolve the issue, okay? Other examples, if you ever, if you ever um, uh, read... Um, um, now I'm blanking out. Um, there's a famous doctor, Maxwell Maltz. Yeah, Maxwell Mar Maltz, um, Psycho-Cybernetics. Again, one of my favorite books. He's actually the father of, 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 of self-improvement, okay? The father of self-improvement. And this is how it all started, by the way. Famous surgeon. I mean, worldwide famous plastic surgeon. And he would he would do amazing transformations of the face. Like somebody's nose got crushed or their nose was too big or whatever it is, you know, they got deformed, you know, in an accident and so on like that. Amazing transformation. 
on, and again, before and after pictures, right? After the patient is healed, the patient would come back to him angry as hell and going, I still look the same. And it's like, wait a second. Did you see the pictures of yourself? And he would actually show them the pictures before and after of themselves. And, and it's like, yeah, I see the difference, but I feel, and I, I see myself the exact same way, the same distorted version of themselves. How does that happen? It blows your mind, right? Because the surgery, and this is what he started noticing, surgery was successful, uh, uh, I guess, but the patient died. That's why. Because the surgery was successful in morphing and changing this version of themselves, but the version that they live or the version that they experience themselves is over here. So that's really, really important for us to understand that. Okay. Do you guys get the, do you guys get the picture? How many of you have changed? There's so many models out there. There are so many models out there. You know, they look fantastic. They look beautiful. Their inner version is ugly as hell. And is 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 hell. Did you know that the same attributes that you need for high level success are the same attributes that high performance drivers have? Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, sorry about that. Um, again, somebody's saying glitch in the matrix. It could be. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Again, uh, everything's good, you know, technically. So uh, I'm also too strong for Wi-Fi. <laughs> could be. Uh, anyway, I, I, what I was uh, what, what I was getting to is that you know uh, people who are people who've had massive uh, transformations, you know, through surgery, many of you will experience that, right? Uh, or you're overweight, underweight, you got some plastic surgery, whatever, you look great, right? There's nothing wrong with that, by the way, having plastic surgery to make you look great and all that stuff. But what happens is that you're out there now, you're beautiful, you've got the body shape, all that, that you, you know, you've wanted, uh, and, you know, all that, which is really, really fantastic. But what happens is that, the more people tell you that you're beautiful, uh, the more distorted that you get that you're not. And this is where this is where if you if you've ever seen somebody who gets into plastic surgery, they need more plastic surgery. It's like no 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 you're perfect. It's like no this piece this part of me now you know needs a lift. This part of me and then later on it's like no this part of me needs a lift. It's it's very similar to those models. You know again they're picture perfect. Right. But then they'll start looking. It's like, oh, this little dent here in my skin needs to get removed. 
they start getting pickier and pickier and pickier, or they start getting uglier and uglier and uglier to themselves. Okay, so why is that? So again, it's it's the self image that's distorting it. There's two versions of themselves. Some, if you have more than two versions of yourself, definitely make an appointment uh, with me. But most people, again, in those situations, their original version of who they are, their genetic makeup, how they were treated as a kid, uh, or whatever they inherited, you know, from their parents, again, genetic uh, infrastructure, right? All those stayed the same, all that stayed the same here. Now they're just running this other version. It's literally, it's not even over here. This identity of themselves, the, the crappy self, let's just call it what it is, the crappy self that they wanna get away from. They didn't get away from it. What happens is that they created something else on top, right? Something, something doesn't look good. You know, you've got an ugly couch. What do you do? You throw a cover over it right? Something stinks, whatever, you throw a cover over it. That's what most people do when they, tr when they change their self-image with all the other modalities that are out there. I don't care, you know, who, who's out there, but that's what they do, right? It's like, hey, that couch is ugly, that situation is ugly, uh, or whatever it is, uh, you know, that I'll just throw a cover over it. So when you change your body in that way, in that format, uh, again, plastic, even plastic surgery, it doesn't really matter. Right? And I was talking about, you know, bulimia, anorexia, and so on like that. Yes, they don't see the cover that's over them. They don't see the real reality. So, uh, for example, they see the inner self still. Right? That's the difference. So with becoming exponentially intelligent through, uh, again, through, you know, through the 18-day hyper meditations that we do, again, changing your life in the 18 days, which is quite amazing, tr quite transformational. Again, those individuals have actually changed um, comment in on how powerful it is, much more powerful than anything that's out there to transform your self-image so you can actually love yourself. So here's the deal. You've got, you've got your identity here, okay? You've got uh, a, 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 a cover of your identity here. Again, a perfect body, I don't know, bigger lips, bigger boobs, whatever it is, you know, people, you know, think that is beautiful here, okay? So what XI does is, and again, like I've discovered, I've discussed why it doesn't work for you, right? So what XI does is like, wait a second, what's going on here, right? You step away from both identities. That's the key because this identity of your beauty is not the real you. This identity of your crappy self, again, bad self image, however you want to call it, right? Uh, illnesses, um, you know, lack of wealth, all that, that's not you. This is not you, okay? You start stepping away from both identities. You, it, it literally starts to create a third person for you. And again, those individuals feeling that on the 18 days, you should be about feeling that you're stepping away, observing yourself, right? You're pulling away and you're going, wait, what's happening with me? I'm seeing how I'm creating this version, the crappy version in myself. Again, you've stepped out. It's a reference point in time and space. This isn't psychology. You are literally creating yourself at a higher version of yourself. You're escalating to a higher level and you're looking down and it's like, wait a second, I've got this version here that's crappy. And, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to create another version to cover this version up in the same space, in the same, say, consciousness, if you will, in the same multiverse. It doesn't work. And I've explained, you know, some of the ramifications on why it doesn't work. So what you want to do, um, yeah, so what you want to do is, again, create more distance between the versions that you're creating. Because if you're in the picture, you know, if you're in the forest, you can't really see the trees. You have to step out of the forest. You have to step out of your life. And this is where say observing happens. Uh, and I talk about spatial referencing. Well, spatial referencing is just really a, uh, the one, two, three steps on creating, say, presence at a much, much deeper level. Not just psychology, not just, you know, feeling good or anything like that but where you render yourself in, say, the multiverse, okay? Which simulation of you are running? So you start to say, again, pull away. You start to see this version of yourself. You start to see the other version of yourself. And it's like, you know what? Um, I like 
the outcome of this version, but let me heal the inner version of myself here. So it's not like you, you go, you know, you know, screw these versions, I'm going to another version. But what you do is like this version, because this, this, this is a distorted version, although you're, you know, more beautiful here in this state. Uh, and this, this version, the messed up version, you know, you're over here. But what you want to do, again, is create a higher version of yourself, you see a higher version here. Okay, so now again, there's three of you. And then what you do is like, if you're seeing yourself from this higher version of yourself, you start healing the pains, the issues, and so on like that, that you wanted to, to get away from by looking more beautiful. So as you, as you migrate from here by healing again, by becoming aware of all the versions, all the distortions that you're not, your pain, your suffering, um, you, you know, if you think you're ugly or whatever it is, you know, you're not attractive, whatever it might be. Again, as you elevate yourself to higher, higher, higher standard of yourself, you'll start to see it's like, no, wait, I'm not ugly. I'm actually quite beautiful. You look in the mirror and you go, wow, you know, I can see why I need to love myself. I can see because you'll start to love yourself in that in that way. You'll start to go, gosh, I need to be nicer to myself. And it's not like you force yourself to be nicer. You just are connected because all these versions that you didn't like about yourself that you changed over here are not you anyway. That's the key. These versions, the distorted versions are not you anyway. So as you go to the higher level and find your real self, right, you start to heal. And then also, as you find your real self here, you start to morph into that beautiful version of yourself that you did surgery on that didn't work out, that you say changed your body shape. So, and what happens is that the beautiful body shape that you have over here, this version, this higher version of yourself owns it. So you're the same, you're beautiful on the inside and you radiate that beauty again, emanating through your body shape, your facial structure, your identity, your confidence on, you know, at a deeper level. So all that beauty, all that say completion, the beauty, the self image, the confidence and everything else is radiating, emanating out of you, your internal self. And that's where real beauty starts to happen. And you've seen individuals, right, that radiate that beauty. And as they age, they get even more beautiful. Women have issues with this, right? Um, you know, they, they age, right? If you, if you don't believe it, look at all the movie stars. You know, they're hot when they're really young, 20s, 30s. I mean, that's just... That should be, I mean, that should be easy, right? 20s, 30s. But what about when you get older, 40s, 50s, 60s? Look at before and after movie stars. Look at any one of them. A lot of them, uh, again, um, well, just didn't turn out as well as they should. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't remember the name, but um, the judge, you know, the judge, you know, the, she could be a beautiful woman, right? beautiful transformation there. What the hell happened? Her self-image, inner self-image didn't match her outer self-image. You see the difference? And then, and then the fortune and the fame separates that more and it magnifies again, the distortions of the real self-image here. And then what happens is that it magnifies so much that they can't stand it anymore. And then unfortunately it's like, shit, this life isn't worth it. Although they had the outside amenities of all the things that people want, right? Beauty, uh, talent, you know, wealth, whatever else that they want, right? But they don't have the love of themselves, the inner love of themselves. Again, because all that stuff magnifies the hatred that they have in their real self. Because when they look in the mirror every morning or every night, when they look in the mirror, that original self is staring back at them. How many of you have experienced that? You've become really wealthy, right? Uh, but then it's like, shit, I still feel like that. Or you've transformed yourself using plastic surgery or makeup or whatever. And it's like, damn, 
you know, at the end of the day, you take your makeup off and say, fuck, what the hell happened, right? Or whatever else that you might do, you might turn it into a great body shape. And again, it's like, damn, you know, I still feel that way. And this is where the yo-yo effects happen. This is where you start to abuse yourself, forcing yourself to look good because in the reason why that happens, and again, comment in on some of you who've done that, um, you know, some of you've done that. It's like, you start looking good, you know, you start looking great. You're starting getting accolades. You know, people are connecting towards you, right? But then you hate yourself for looking beautiful. Why does that happen? Just because of what I just explained earlier. The reason why you hate yourself for looking beautiful. And then you force yourself, you know, to go to the gym and you hate it. You force yourself to put makeup on and you hate it. And you can see it in your frequencies. You can see it in, in the way you interact with people. Because the more people, people get attracted to you, the more people get attracted to you, the more it says that you're an imposter on the inside. Because you didn't resolve the underlying pattern. So I'm not telling you not to do, you know, the exercises, not to do those things. But what I am telling you is that, you know, become exponentially intelligent on the inside. You know that you are that beauty that you are. Okay? Uh, and if you don't believe it, don't push it. Don't force yourself to love yourself where you are, because that's a lie as well. So these, these are, um, <clears throat> so one so let's jump into, say, some of the things that you can do right now to, say, transform your self-image. Um, I would say instantly, but it'll, it'll, it'll be more, say, intense than anything that you've experienced before. So let's take a uh, deep breath in. So uh, we'll get into the steps on how to create a positive self-image uh, for success and happiness and beauty. Uh, breath in again, notice your spine. And if you're new, just work with me. I'm um, reading some of the comments here. Somebody's talking about the mirror meditation. Exactly. Uh, on the on the 18 days, we're going to be doing the mirror meditation on the image that you're actually reflecting. And it's scary for those individuals. It's like, shit, that's what I'm really reflecting. It's like, oh, wow, that's why I get treated the way I do. That's why I treat myself the way I do. Uh, again, it all starts with that inner self image. Uh, breath in again. So one of the things that you can do, one of the best things that you can do right here, right now, is start to observe yourself. Okay? And for most people, if you don't think you're attractive, okay, start to observe your hands or your feet, even if they're not attractive. Okay? We got to start somewhere. Uh, or I don't know, wherever else, you know, uh, your knees, start to notice your knees. But I know that sounds crazy, but if you've tried everything else, it hasn't worked out, try this, right? And it'll be in time for, uh, you know, beach season uh, coming up. So take a breath in, a beauty breath in. So uh, we'll start with just an example of the hands. Start to notice your hands. Start to notice your hands and everything your hands do. So if you're washing dishes, right? It's like, oh, my hands are washing dishes. So observe that you're an alien. And aliens, this alien doesn't have hands. And it's like, shit, amazing, amazing technology. What is it doing? It's like, oh, it's holding on to something, right? Oh, I'm holding my phone. How is my hand holding my phone? It sounds crazy. And my methods usually do sound crazy, but the results, undeniable, okay? This will help you distance yourself from the version that you've created so real. Take a breath in again. It's called spatial referencing. It's a different version of it. For those who are aware of spatial referencing, uh, again, you, know, you can do it at a deeper level. For those who are new, try this exercise. Notice your hands for a week. Right? Nothing else. 
write it down if you're that type of person that needs to journal, right? It's like, oh, you know, I noticed my left hand, you know, holding my phone while my right hand did something else, okay? Just keep observing that. And as you do, you'll start to say separate the distorted identity that you are. And then some of you, even now, you know, in this meditation, because I'm working on you all, again, you might feel the frequencies uh, for most of you. So I mean, you will look at your hand and it's like, oh, well, wow, my hand look like my, looks like my dad's hands or my mom's hands. Congratulations, you're starting to know, you're starting to understand that, wow, wait, if my hands look and feel like somebody else's mom or dad, that must mean that my emotions might be very similar to them. My identity might be very similar to them. My self-image is theirs, not mine. And then you go, oh, that's why I don't have a good self-image or that's why I don't like myself because you're trying to push away, you're trying to push away that self-image that's not you. That's why you hate yourself or you have a bad self-image. It's not that you have a bad self-image, it's just that the self-image that you're rendering or you're using to create your life is somebody else's. Your body is just telling you, I don't like this self-image because it's not my life. Your higher version is just telling you that. But what you're doing is like, shit, this is me. I'm forcing it to be me. It doesn't work out that way. Okay. So again, simple exercise. Watch your hands. Observe your hands. Jot down what they do all day long. Try it for a day. You One, you'll be less depressed. It sounds crazy, but you'll be less depressed than ever. Um, you'll be more happier because you go, oh, shit, that's not me. Wait, that's not me. Wait, that's not me. At higher levels, again, through the 18 days, through the frequency um, meditations that we do, and so on, the frequency spas and some of the other things that we do, um, some of the other things that we do, uh, you'll start to separate your identity so strongly. It's like, wait a second. And this is where, this is where individuals start to go, wait, I'm aging like my mom or dad. You know, you've got a beautiful body shape. You know, you're getting into your 30s, 40s. It's like, shit, I don't want to go that way. How many of you go through that process? Guy or, guy or you know, uh, feminine, masculine, right? You go through that process of your body shape. It doesn't have to happen because you're aging like your parents. You start to observe. It's like, wait a second. That's how they did it. Does that mean that's not how I did it? No, you don't have to do that. So you can go that extreme. And this is where people literally start to render or change how they get older they can retain the body shape. Again, I can't guarantee it for all of you, but there's a lot of you, you know, comment in on even those who were in their 50s, they regained the body shape of their 30s and 40s by becoming exponentially intelligent. So again, it's that powerful. Uh, and this is just the beginning for you, again, especially if you're new. So, um, all right. Uh, any questions on that? All right, so the next half, guys. Uh, this one's really interesting. Downplayed my looks and even made me look like a boy when I was very young. So for you, Tracy, it, yeah, I can still see that you force yourself to go, no, I'm not that. I, I, I'm this version. So you're always like escaping the version that your parents say, you know, pushed inside of you. You're doing a great job. Again, separating the two, uh, doing the hand exercise for you, by the way, will really help you uh, move forward. Um, all right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into reading individuals. Uh, by the way, the next frequency spot is June 15th. 
Uh, it's an amazing transformation, guys, especially if you are, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, real, uh, not real, like frequent, because frequency spa is more real than a normal spa. But if you're doing, you know, spa treatments and so on to make, to you know, to make you look better, to make yourself look younger, if you put makeup on and so on like that, you know, to make, uh, to, uh, to become more beautiful and so on, try the frequency spa. Because the frequency spa, when you look that beautiful and that grand and you're doing the frequency spa, I would highly, and, and this is another tip for you all who are doing the frequency spas, when you're putting on makeup, when you're dressing up and you're looking, you know, all that, you know, that gorgeousness that you all are, right? When you're doing that, guy or girl, uh, it doesn't matter. When you're doing that, play one of the frequency spas, or any of the frequency spas that you like, play that. And that will create an inner template not an outer template, that template that's on the outside version of you, when you look like that, it'll start to melt inside you, right? So it's not just a facade. It's not just like a costume anymore. You know, your makeup and, you know, your dress and so on like that. Uh, what'll happen is that, you know, because a lot of women, they'll dress up just to look, feel sexy, feel whatever, okay? But what if you could integrate that feeling from your dress or your makeup or hairstyle or you know, whatever it might be that you do to look sexy and beautiful for yourself and others. What if you could integrate that piece inside you? And that's basically the next frequency spa uh, coming up on June 15th, right? Looking all that, but feeling all that, again, creating a strong self image. So that's the next frequency spa uh, coming up on June 15th. So, and imagine what could happen if you're feeling sexy already, just the way you are, and then you, you know, you throw on makeup and clothes and all that. How much more sexier and elegant and beautiful, whatever you know, look that you want to accomplish for yourself. How much more would you be? Right? You own that look. That's the way, that's the way you want to be, right? All right. Uh, let's get into uh, scanning you. And if you're new, scanning basically is that I have abilities that I can scan anybody basically read their master blueprint on how they're rendering your, their life. Um, and then not just read it, but then help you transform it. Many of you, which is really cool. Uh, you know, you do uh, private sessions and so on like that because, uh, because of a scan that I did for you. It's like Moss, you know, you scan me and it's like my whole life changed. And the scan only takes like a minute or two. And it's like, holy shit, how did that happen? Right. And then you start to believe it. it's like, wow, that can happen. And then, you know, you schedule a private session, by the way, it's a waiting line. So, um, so, so uh, you're not going to get in right away. It's just, you know, just a lot of people wanting to come in. So just be patient with that. Um, all right. So a scan is usually I analyze your master blueprint, your life blueprint, and then go, this is where the issue started. Let's edit that. It literally is rewiring or recoding. I would say your genetic structure, because once you start to awaken, you can actually change your genetic structure. Again, um, uh, you don't have to age. You don't have to get diseased. You don't have to, um, a, a lot of times, if you're not looking, one last thing, guys, uh, and then we'll get into the scans. If you're not liking the way you look, okay? Especially if you look like your father or mother, okay? And they weren't say all that attractive. And again, I can't say it for all, but what will happen is like, if that's their pattern that they're running, okay, that's their pattern that they're running and you're looking like them, again, facially, and you don't like that look, okay? As you awaken and you start to go, that's not me. Not only do their diseases and how they age change, your facial structure will morph into the version of you that you wanted to experience in this reality which is really amazing. Those who have done it, those who have changed their facial structure, a lot of times their eye color changes, you know, that it goes that deep. Those who have changed, can you please um, do me a favor, send in a before and after picture of yourself. Okay. And I know there's uh, plenty of you out there um, and again, or comment in, uh, but that'd be so fantastic if you could, because uh, that's literally proof uh, or accumulating evidence that, you know, the genetics are changing, right? And it's not only just for you, your kids, uh, if you have kids, uh, if they're younger or not born yet, they start changing with your gen new genetics as well. So uh, again, it just allows us to say transform. 
uh, it just allows us to, again, create more proof or evidence that's this is happening. So anyway, back to the scanning uh, on that. Um, uh, back to the scanning. Again, I analyze you. It basically explain why your life is the way it is. Life explain. Okay. And then you can do something about it or just uh, help you uh, change it a bit. All right. Uh, before I do that, uh, this is a disclaimer. This is Masajati with Exponential Intelligence, Sunday, May 15th, uh, 2022. Uh, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't diagnose or heal. I can scan your frequency signature uh, and tell you what I see. So please consult your doctor, professional, whatever it is, you know, if I do tell you that, hey, I see this issue in you, okay? Uh, if you ask to be scanned today, you're agreeing. Uh, that way we may use your session on any public media to help inspire others. So remember, if you don't want us to share your session, please do not ask to be scanned. By the way, you don't have to use your real name or anything. Uh, I don't need all that. I, I tap into your IP signature um, uh, to read you. Again, it's not psychic abilities. Uh, all contents are protected by copyright. You may not use our content in any way, shape, or form for any purpose without my written permission. And then if you ask to be scanned, just please ask only once. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get started for you. Um, this one is KB, uh, KBBK. KBBK. Uh, and if you're new, say, hey, you're, uh, you know, I'm new. Uh, but if you're not new and say, and you say, "Hey, I'm new, just to be scanned." Don't do that. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not good. Uh, KBBK, where are you? There you are. Can Can I get a scan, please? Yes. So what happens is that um, it's interesting. And again, KBBK, it could be a man, it could be a woman, but but the important is the important is that you know when I scan you, um, when I'm tapping in, you know, plugging into your frequency signature. Um, there's not a clear definition for me. You know, sometimes I might get the definitions, you know, if you say, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're a, you're a woman and I might pick you up as a masculine frequency, okay, because you're running masculine pattern. But in this case, KBBK, uh, what's happening for you is like, well, you know, are you a masculine identity or frequency identity? So you have, you know, that rendering issue on well, well, which one am I? And then what you do is like, you kind of get, um, um, you kind of take advantage of it. So if you need to be more masculine, if you're female, then you morph into a more masculine identity of a female. Or if you're if you're a male, uh, you would morph into, say, a more feminine identity. For example, if you're, uh, again, in a relationship, you would turn the reverse. So say that you're a male, okay? Uh, KBBK, say that you're a male. And then what happens is you get into a relationship. You would most likely attract a, a masculine partner, although you're the male. Uh, or the masculine, the masculine component of the relationship. So you would turn more and more feminine, for example, they would have to dominate the relationship. And then it's like, well, you get drowned uh, or the, the reverse. If you're a female, you, you would attract um, feminine males in the relationship. You become the man. So either way, it switches for you. Okay. Uh, and this becomes a problem. Um, for you because it's like, well, who am I? So if you've done XI, which it seems like you might have not done a lot of XI, uh, and again, comment back if I'm if I'm uh, um, scanning you uh, on the accuracy. I know I'm accurate, but it just allows you to go, shit, you know, what did he just tap into? Okay. Uh, at the end of the month, I do do I do live scans where we actually interact. So if you're interested in that, and if you're new. Uh, I don't know how to get a hold of them. I don't know how what you can do to communicate to our team. Maybe the team can put that up there uh, if you'd like. But the pattern for you, what I'm helping you with, and if you've done XI from what I've seen, is like you're pulling yourself up. Just like I said in the in the self image example, you're pulling yourself above yourself. It's like wait a second, there's a masculine version, there's a feminine version of me, but this is the real version. So you're going to take. So if you're female or if you're feminine and become a stronger feminine, say, persona of you. You don't have to switch back and forth. Right? So uh, it's almost like your parents, um, if you're a female, you know, it's like, Shit, I wish it was a boy. Or if you're masculine, it's like, God, I wish, you know, we had a girl, that kind of identity. So, uh, and the other aspect of you, you know, is like you always morph into individuals uh, to cater to their likings. Uh, so, so, so what that means is like somebody, 
you know, if somebody likes X, Y, and Z, you would cater to, you would create a persona of X, Y, and Z. But the problem is that you can do that. It makes you good friends and connections and so on like that. But the more connected that you get, the more that you lose your identity of who you are, because there is no identity of who you are. You'd always have, you'd always need somebody to connect with, uh, again, to reflect back who you are. So you'd always be needy or wanting people. And some, some people go, well, you know, you've, you've really got great, say, relationship skills. You've got all that. Well, of course you do, because you you replicate, you'd be a great salesperson and so on like that, a therapist or whatever, not, not a therapist because you'd absorb other people's garbage, but salesperson because you, again, you, it's mirroring. You do mirroring at a top-notch level. Uh, the key is though, who are you mirroring? You don't know who you are. So in this instance, what I'm doing is like, if you like that version, uh, you know, what piece uh, of that person do you like? So you, and then, you know, you can pull that in, you know, with some private sessions or even the 18 day hyper meditations. So this way, and you're at a level that you're, that's what you're doing, whatever that you've done with XI, as you become exponentially intelligent, you're pulling those pieces like, wait a second, I like that piece in that person. That's me. I like that piece in that person. That's me. So that's where you are. So congratulations on that. Hopefully that made sense uh, for you. Um, Uh, this one, uh, I find myself uh, repeating my mom's patterns that I don't like this at all. Yes. So uh, again, that's master creator. So for you, you're getting into that groove. Um, and it's not just surface layers, but these are really, really deep. And the level that you're at with XI, you're seeing yourself uh, at a deeper level. So again, surface level areas, but this is more like genetic makeup. Uh, you're starting seeing deeper layers of say how you see, you know, perceive things, your self identity, again, that deeper self image of yourself. That's the level that you're at. So again, congratulations on that. Um, this are, 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 these are like deep, deep, deep generational patterns uh, that you're really seeing. So really nice job. Uh, the Mother's Day. Uh, coming up. I don't know exactly when that's coming up. Uh, if the team can put it on there, uh, that's what that is for. It's not Mother's Day. It's mother's. Uh, it's a mother's meditation uh, for you to, again, remove the distorted versions of what you inherited from your mom. Okay? And then also, if you are a mom, uh, you don't pass that on to your, uh, your, uh, your, your kids. Uh, plus, uh, on top of that, um, uh, and it's not just emotional, but again, healing from if you did have a distorted mom. So that's what the, the mother's event uh, is about. Uh, this one, Estefano Diaz, how else can, a, can you scan my health? So, yeah, when I tap into you, Estefano, uh, what's happening for you? Um, 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 what's happening is, is like you're comparing, uh, if that makes sense to you, you're, you're at the level that you're at from what I'm seeing. Um, and it, you might not be with XI for a long time. I can't tell, I can't quite tell, but the important thing is that you're awakening to the level and you're observing. So this is where you are. You're observing your health and you're going, shit, you know, you feel a lot like your father. Okay. So you feel a lot like your father and it's just, and it's just like, um, wait, you know, I'm turning into my father. Basically, that's what you're turning into. So you're awakening to the fact that you're turning into the father. If you didn't know that, start to notice. So whatever happened to, say, your father in his mid-40s, something similar will happen to you in your mid-40s. You know, your father, say, uh, I kind of start to see, say, health patterns or health issues uh, in you. Again, very congruent. And it, it's a masculine frequency. So if, you're, if your mother ran masculine frequencies, then it'd be your physical mother, but again, it's whoever, say, personified a masculine frequency, okay? Uh, in this case, to me, I would, uh, my meaning would be, you know, your father, again, it could be your mom, uh, or your grand grandmother or grandfather, it doesn't matter. But again, it's a masculine frequency uh, that you're adopting. In fact, if you look at your whole life, Stefano, you know, you, you know, you, you it's like, you're trying to go this way, but it's almost like you find yourself in a rut, right? And it's like, shit, I can't get out of this rut. It's because you're running the same recipe as, again, this masculine identity that, that, that's running you. Does that make sense? So no matter what you do, 
no matter how grand your life is, your life is not yours. And that this is where a lot of people have a lot of issues. It's like, shit, you know, I have a grand life. I should be happy. I should be this. I should be that. But why am I not? It's because you're running again in the same footprint, the same experiences as this masculine identity. Again, it could be father, it could be a mother, but it's masculine. So your life is over here. So what you're starting to realize is like, wait a second, I'm aging, or you'll notice that you're aging uh, like this person. And not just aging like this person, but you're actually, uh, your life experiences are very similar or almost identical in some places. So for example, they, you know, your father got divorced later in, in the year, uh, later in his years from what I'm seeing, or separated or something like that, uh, that pattern will help uh, you. If he got, say, bankrupt, if he went bankrupt uh, in his 30s, for example, and again, it could be you, it might not be you, uh, you would have like financial issues or something like that. That's how deep the pattern runs. It's not just looks and eye color, hair color, and so on, guys. Those genetic infrastructure, it, it, is, um, it goes very deep. So with the XI, you can pull that out. Uh, health issues overall, though, for you, again, not a doctor or anything like that, Stefano, but um, some of the, um, one of the issues that you have is, is that you, um, uh, you, you, your blood uh, is, is, um, just turning this off here, uh, your blood is, is, um, um, your blood is, your blood is um, um, thin, it's not, I say, as robust, and that's where, uh, your organs start to say shut down or start to close off or, you know, it's that propensity uh, from what I'm seeing. Again, I, I could be totally wrong, okay, but that's what I'm seeing. Uh, and there's also, there's, um, uh, I want to say uh, some kind of like bacteria or something that's running in your blood. Uh, it could be just momentary, you know, or something like that. But, um, oh, uh, it's bacteria from your mouth, bacteria from your mouth from what I'm seeing. Yeah, so look that up, it's bacteria from your mouth, that's affecting you know, your heart, your blood, and so on like that, okay? Uh, and again, overall, the, your blood is not as robust as it should be, so uh, you know, take a look at what you can do for that, uh, and then that'll help regenerate uh, sessions, the 18 days and so on, will help pull you in. Sometimes, you know, those physical symptoms, you know, blood, you know, thinner blood, or not as say adequate blood, uh, and so on like that is because if you're running that version of yourself, or if sometimes a lot of times, if people have like um, um, nerve, nerve pain, nerve issues, and so on like that, and some of the diseases, uh, you know, associated to nerve issues, if you're running somebody else's say system, and your system is over here, although you're getting pulled into that, you're going to have say, uh, electrical issues, again, or nerve issues, because Again, that's, a, that's like a short for you. And I kind of see that as well. Uh, but in your case, it's thinner blood, right? Because you, you can't have, say, thick, robust life or blood if you're not running your own pattern. So anyway, uh, what I was helping you do is, you know, shift you over here. Um, so uh, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, you're in a transitionary phase where you can stop all that, Alfonso. Uh, anyway. Uh, this is interesting, Mark Lee James. Hi, boss, my boss is, uh, my boss is trying to get rid of me and giving me a bad image. Uh, you know, you're going to sometimes, you know, when you elevate yourself, you know, you get more and more confident in yourself, no matter if it's your boss, whoever, and they're insecure, your boss feels really insecure. As you elevate, as you get stronger of yourself, right, what will happen is that people try to knock you down because you're, they're here, you're here, you elevated yourself here, they look bad. So instead of them going, hey, you know what, what did you do? Some people will do that, but most people go, well, shit. They look, they look a lot better than me, than me right? Frequency-wise and everything else, right? Things go with the flow for you and so on like that from what I'm seeing. It's like, shit, you know, this guy's making me look bad. So what do you do? They try to knock you down. Simple as that. So congratulations. Look at it as a success mechanism or a gauge that you've elevated. It's not only your boss, it's other people as well. Uh, so the one question is, is that, in the past, that environment would have been 
say nourishing for you because of the patterns that you run, the distorted patterns that, you know, it'd be nourishing for you. But now it's like, why do you want to stay there anyway? Simple as that. Uh, you seem like you need to get pushed out anyway. So you might be doing you a favor. So uh, before he tries to get rid of you, quit. And then you'll see that that confirms your deletions. It's like, shit, I'm not taking that anymore, right? Because you're always there where you don't want to be or where you don't need to be, however that works, right? Uh, so you're always pushing your version. So the deeper version is like, hey, I deserve to be here, right? Uh, so that's your younger version. It's almost like when uh, you almost, um, your mom almost lost you, so to speak, uh, during birth, or she was thinking, uh, shit, you know, um, I don't know if I want this birth and so on like that. It, it goes back. Let's remove that pattern. So your pattern overall is like, I need to be here. I need to be here. You know, I deserve to be here. And then whether it's in a relationship or boss situations, what will happen is that, you know, you're always proving yourself to that relationship that, hey, I, I'm worthy. It, it doesn't work that way. Now you're worthy. You, you know, again, you become uh, more exponentially intelligent. You're more worthy of yourself. So do you need to be there? So you make that decision to go, hey, what? I don't need you uh, to prove to you that I'm worthy. I know I am. And then you'd walk away. And that would confirm your deletion of that pattern completely. And then better deserving things, relationships, and so on would come to you. So congratulations. And notice your definition of how you see that say, uh, perception of where you are compared to what I see. I see it from an outside perspective, okay? Uh, and again, so uh, much, much more accurate. Um, Moss, I've done the 18 days, but never scanned. This is G, it, says it's, it just says G, so whoever you are. So yeah, for, for you, G, uh, it just seems like your upper back, again, not a doctor, but your upper back, you know, starts to curve or you have issues with your upper back. It's almost like, a, you know, severe curve in, in your family. Uh, from what I'm seeing, you know, as you age, you not only get shorter, but then, you know, you, you know how the, you know, the, the upper back, not just a normal curve, but the upper back starts to really curve, you know, uh, so you, that pattern, I, I see that in you heavily uh, on that. So you might have upper back issues or, um, but basically, or tightness, uh, tightness of the shoulders, tightness of the upper back, and so on. If you're younger, I uh, can't quite tell how old you are, uh, but you seem really, really vibrant, but then you feel older at the same time. So again, they're kind of dysmorphic. Sometimes, oh, what's happening? Take a, take a breath in, Chi. You're running your grandma's pattern. There you go. So your grandma um, when you were like two, one, two, three, four, two, three, like between two to four years old, uh, your grandma took, of you, uh, took care of you and then died, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, you made an oath to your grandma, so to speak, that kind of deal, um, you know, or you wanted to connect to your grandma and it could be your mom. Um, but anyway, you know, that grandma and your grandma had that. So, oh, so as she passed over, as she crossed over, you know, her last identity was, you know, being, gosh, I wish I was youthful, like you were back then, you know, between two to four. So literally her genetic makeup literally penetrated your frequency. It's like, oh shit, that's, so you inherited a lot. So basically what, what I see is like, you might feel older. When you were younger, you'd go, oh, she's such a wise person. She's an old soul and so on. Because you are, you know, you're a young person, but again, aging like an older person. Again, there's a big age gap between you your grandmother or even you and your mom right so you're aging like uh again an older person uh so let's release that and i can do that now for you uh take a breath in and those people running similar patterns as well this is where again you know uh, and this is where generation after generation after generation people go shit you know you, you know kids are having say arthritis issues issues and so on like that you know and is it the foods of course it's the foods you know uh, but the underlying cause on why we eat foods like that, that are nutritious or good for us is because the underlying frequency is that, hey, you know what, again, in this scenario, uh, say, for example, you know, your grandmother, had, you know, the hip, uh, I mean, the, the, the curvature of the back, upper back and so on happened to her in her 50s 
for example. Um, uh, and I could be getting them, but this is just an example. It started happening to her in her like, six, say, 60, right? It'll happen to you when you hit 50, right? If you have kids, it'll happen to them if you continue this process. It'll happen to them, say, in their 40s, and then so on and so on. So generation after generation, diseases of the age start coming into the younger version. And this is the underlying reason why, right? And uh, again, I can prove it to you, the kids who age this way, kids who are teenagers and have arthritis and all that, and they feel old, they feel, literally, they feel old. It's like you disconnect them from that pattern and they don't have arthritis anymore. They age like a normal kid. So again, that's how, um, lack of a better word, that's how we're fucking up evolution. We're not evolving, we're devolving. We're going backwards and we're going backwards and creating history you know, forward. If you don't believe me, look at all the, say, cyclical things that happen, wars, uh, you know, uh, uh, inflation, deflation, crisis, um, abuse, right? Look what's happening in, in Shanghai, in Russia, in the Ukraine, in the US. It's all a fucking big cycle, right? Uh, and again, we're creating future from the past, thinking that that's going to work didn't fucking work in the, in the past. It's not going to work in the future, guys. Um, we do a world meditation, frequency meditation, uh, helping like a world meditation on that. So again, tell your friends if you really want to change the world with real solutions that'll, uh, that'll shift uh, the world, not just you, but... Um, um, Uh, this one is a, um, is there a way not to be an observer? Yeah, so, so you, um, is it Leva? Yeah, L-A, no, Alexa, L-E-X-A. So Alexa, yes, there is. Uh, the, the fact that you're, ob you're observing that you're an observer, uh, that's 50% uh, right there of where you are. So take a breath in, Alexa, and others as you. Let's create that, again, distance, okay? Because again, the version that's observing is here. Okay. What you've done is like you stepped into another version of yourself here. You're over here. Okay. That's why you always feel separate. That's why I say your experiences are always outside of yourself. That's why I say intimate relationships and so on like that uh, are say not as say vital or not as vibrant uh, as it would be. Because again, there's another identity of you that you have to portray here, Lexa, right? Um, because what you've done, because you know, even as this child, from what I'm seeing is that shit, you know, all these people's version, I, you know, it's like, it's just like them running at you, right. And drowning you as a child. There's something about drowning or suffocating or not being able to breathe, by the way. Anyway, so that, that, let's get rid of that for you as well. So what you've done is like, well, shit, I'll protect myself. I'll just create a shell. And you've done a great job. It's a great mechanism when you were younger, like I said, but now what's happening is I'll create a shell here and I'll just create this identity here for me. And then when I grow up, um, you know, I'll open up this identity, but then you never figured out how to strengthen this identity here. And this identity is growing more and more. It becomes more real than your real identity. This is where, again, um, one, uh, you, you'll feel less, you'll feel more and more distant uh, or more and more unfeeling or more and more say bland as life goes by. So this, this is where people go more extreme. They'll hurt themselves, they'll abuse themselves, they'll cut themselves and so on like that. That might, that might've been you or in your family, by the way, because you need to feel the real you, right? That you've protected. So it's okay for you now though, you know, whatever you've done with XI, what you're doing is like, wait a second, is it time for me to get out of this shell? I think it's safe and it is safe for you, Alexis. So step out and you'll start to see at first, it's hypersensitive because you're feeling, uh, you know, your your life. You're feeling your life experience for real now. It's not a shell of you here. Okay? You didn't. You don't have to use this as protection. Basically, so basically, you pulled off the condom. Uh, let's put it that way, and you're feeling it for life. You know, um, and that's what I'm helping you with. You know, it's just like so. Instead of then, and then you'll get used to it. But then the key component is that uh, for you, uh, and again, congratulations for you, is that you are um, 
um, you don't have to create, you don't have to protect yourself. You just are, which is really nice, right? And then you ward off those people that are, say, again, uh, pushing into you. Uh, with that, you would have to, um, uh, you would have to be respectful of yourself uh, and say no uh, when you need to, when you need to say no. Uh, this one, Ivy Blue, hi, Moss. I was really going through a difficult time and you helped me through it. Uh, thank you. You're so welcome, Ivy. Yeah, and uh, and that was a process where you, Ivy, which is really fantastic, so congratulations, confirmed your deletions. You, know, you confirmed your deletions, you stepped out, you did what you needed to do, and that's the difficult. It's like you had that choice, right, Ivy? You had that choice where it's like, do I... Do I, do I suffer momentarily, because that's what you would think, or do I sacrifice, you know, myself, my identity, that old self that's not working for this new version? And that's why it was difficult for you, because literally, it's not about, say, healing your old self, it's about dying off your old self your old self literally dies off and that's what you the, the, what you were going through ivy so now it's a rebirth of who you are so congratulations on that it literally feels like a rebirth so everything will feel fresh to you even like walking and doing those you know simple things will go whoa this feels really good because again that's the real you so congratulations ivy um this one uh jacqueline gates a lot of women have uh, body dysmorphia it's super common uh, but hey ladies uh, let's overcome this bullshit uh like jacqueline did uh, absolutely you know where she was before uh again from what i'm seeing beautiful gorgeous but then she would get um uh, she would get abused for her beauty if that makes sense to you a lot of top-notch models uh I, I was looking at the show this video on um on youtube the, the instagram models they go to dubai and have weird shit happen to them you know that's the kind of stuff that you know that happens again with beautiful gorgeous women uh you know they don't think much of themselves so you know all these weird again weird weird shit happens uh to them over there thinking that that's part of the growth process it's not it's not it's just like Jacqueline said you got to get rid of that bullshit you don't have to destroy yourself or anything like that to make money get famous or all that bullshit all right um um uh, we could go on and on but we are in a time reality here so uh a lot of things coming up guys by the way um um, Mother's Day event is on May 19th, by the way. The European tour is in June and July. So you can check out the website on that. You can go to XI, uh, xisuccess.com. It's not up and running that URL yet, but it will be. But you can go to masajati.com, go to events, and you know there'll be a calendar uh, of what we have. Uh, and the European events is literally, uh, it's a whole different definition of say XI. It's a much, much cleaner, refined definition of exponential intelligence. Uh, and so, some of those events are online. Okay. So uh, you can take a look at that. The driving success is here in, in Minneapolis, actually Brainerd, which is two hours north. Beautiful area, guys. One of the top five resorts. Uh, we've got that uh, for you, if you guys really want to drive into success and just like blow away all the bullshit and uh, insecurities and all that, not just of driving, but about being yourself and really integrating uh, your higher version of yourself. Okay, this is the same. If you if you if you if you follow say successful individuals who are really successful, they're usually active in say driving. You know. Uh, extreme sports, motorcycles, speed, whatever it is, because it pushes them to the boundaries of space and time. And this is where they get clarity. This is where they get connection. And this is where they do wealth better than most individuals. So that's the component that we're going to use. That's a mechanism. And you don't have to drive. There's enough people that are driving. I think, I don't know if we're full yet, but there's enough people that's driving that again, we can, I can duplicate that experience for you. So if you can't drive, you can still be on, you can still be there and then it'll also be online for you. Okay. So that's coming up. Uh, I did a free call on that. So take a look at that as well. Not exactly sure where the free call is, but I did do a free call <clears throat> on the driving, why it's so important. And then also 
the London events coming up for you um, for those. Uh, and as COVID restrictions, you know, lift, um, it's, 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 um, yeah, uh, it, it becomes easier to travel. It's amazing how COVID just like disappeared. Kind of weird, isn't it? Was it real or maybe fake? I don't know. Uh, so that's coming up. And then June elevation. If you're new to me, okay. Uh, if you're new to me or uh, in advanced XI, uh, the elevation is really a fantastic opportunity. So if you're new, it allows you to get your toes wet with frequency. Cause again, it's, it's not psychology or anything like that. It's very, very different. Um, it allows you to get your toes wet. It allows you to understand what frequencies are. It allows you to say, start understanding spatial referencing, which is the fastest way to transform your life bar none, uh, it allows you the mechanics on that. If you've been here before uh, and you're a seasoned ex sire, the elevation is there for you to say, perpetuate that momentum that you've got going, all right? So it's it, elevation is in between the 18 day hyper meditations. All right, um, a lot of great comments. Uh, we'll just do one more, Nick. Is it Nick Nick? I'd love to be scanned. I'm still interested to see or feel what he's picking up for. Yeah. So one last, one last. So Nick Nick, for you, uh, again, um, you seem like a feminine frequency, but you're always wanting to the protection. So you're always, always. Um, so what I'm seeing is that you're always looking up to somebody. You're never good enough. Okay. You're never ever good enough. So you're always going. When I, so you always look up to somebody, uh, even as a young child, you're always, which is good, but then you're never good enough, no matter how old you are. You know, when you're, when you're looking up to somebody as a kid and go, yeah, you know, that's the way I want to you know, be like, that's really fantastic, right? Because it gives you a sense of direction. But when that, when that pattern perpetuates for you, you know, now you're in twenties or thirties or forties, you know, seventies and so on. And you're always looking up because you're not always good enough. You're always, you know, you're always incomplete. You're always questioning yourself. This is all, you know, where you always have to seek other people's advice. It's like, what do you think about this? Uh, and even if you're right, you'll go with somebody else. Cause again, you always think that you're wrong. You'd go with somebody else and then you go, shit, why did I go with them? Why did I go with what they said? Although I was right. Okay. That's the underlying reason. So again, the key is that you basically, you don't trust yourself or you're always waiting to be that version, that better version of who you think you are, but you'll never reach that better version of yourself because the pattern in you is that when I, so you have to delete that pattern. I can quickly delete it for you. Uh, take a breath in and then you'll start to go, it was like, wait a second. I am on that better version here in current time. And then that better version that you're seeking out here in the future becomes say permeated or ingrained in your current version. And then the current version grows and expands. Again, that's where the process of inner expansion comes in. That's my book coming up uh, hopefully soon. All right, guys. Uh, so, so Nick, Nick, again, comment in on um, uh, how that felt for you. That makes sense for you. Uh, again, guys, next week, uh, look at what's happening for you, it's, uh, we've got uh, some good stuff coming up for you next week on Moss on Sunday. All right, uh, notice what you notice, guys, and then notice the detail of what you're noticing. All right, peace.